In this tutorial, the next thing I'd like to talk about are CINT, C-Single, C-Double, and C-STR. To do this, what I'd like to do is let's just add a single button to your form. And I'll call this CINT, CDBL, CSNGL, and C, S, T, R. I believe those are most of them. And I might have misspelled single. No, I spelled it right. Let's go ahead and use those. I'm going to go ahead and say, um, let's do C, Int first. <coughs> C, Int is a function. It's going to allow me to do some things. Specifically, what CNT stands for is, what do you suppose, those of you that did your reading? Convert to an integer. All of these are in acronyms. They look like they're abbreviating what they really do. So where would you want to do that? Well, let me show you this. I'll say dim um, x as string. And I'm going to set it equal to the number 72, but in quotes. i got to tell you, that is not really a number. That's just a 7 and a 2, just like you have an A or a B. These are really, as far as your computer is concerned, letters, characters. Do you understand? That is not a number. So sometimes you really want to take that string and turn it into a number. I'll say dim my integer as integer. And to make it switch across and become a number, you're going to use the cint command. So I'll say integer is equal to, i got to do something to x. What have I got to do to x? Well, typically with functions, you're just going to write that function and then within parentheses, you're going to have some container to put things in. And the parentheses, you're going to use that number x or that variable x and do something to it. So we start off with 72. I convert it to an integer. So really what cint does is it converts strings to integers. That's the punchline. And to prove that it's an integer, let's say in listbox one dot items dot add, I take two times x. Now that's completely legal. I can do a mathematical operation in a list box. This is really going to take two times whatever my integer is. And what happens here is comes in as the letters seventy two. It gets converted to an integer. It goes into my integer. Uh-oh. And we want to say my integer here. I want to prove that I actually converted it to an integer. So now if I go to build and I run it, when I click on that button, you're going to see the number 144 there. Do you understand it makes no sense taking a letter of the alphabet times 2? That's the situation where we might want to use this. Now, that was one of the commands we we're going to use here. So that kind of finishes off one idea. The next thing I've got on my button is the CDBL command. Well, CDBL converts obviously what? What do you suppose I'm going to finish this with? Strings to doubles. It's really simple. I'll go ahead and declare a double as my double. I'll set it equal to a number like three point, excuse me, my double as double. And up here, let me dim y as string, just like I did before. Let's initialize my string here as, quote, 
3.14, which is just a series of characters. And my double now, I want to use this C double command. And I bet you can look at what I did before and predict what I'm going to write here. What do you suppose I'm going to say here to make this work? C, D, B, L, Y. So what that does is it takes these characters here, converts them to a double, which is really a decimal, as we spoke about the other day, and puts that number here. No longer is it characters. And now I can do math with it. I can say something like, well, let's double that value to see if it's working. And I want to change this to my double to see that it does work. And now when I go to run this, you can see 2 times 3.14 is this. Well, you couldn't normally do that with letters, so this is going to allow me to do that. Another type of data type that we talked about yesterday was a single. So, you know what? I can just about copy all of this code from here to here because it's going to be real similar. I think you see the pattern. This is going to be about CSNGL. It's going to convert strings to a single, which is a smaller decimal. A double is a gigantic decimal or a gigantic number that has to be written in scientific notation. Times 10 to the power of 308 or to the power of minus 308. That's a tiny, tiny fraction. 15 places accuracy. Singles much smaller. We're looking at only to the power of 38 plus or minus 38 and maybe six places of accuracy. We talked about that the other day. Let's change this to my single. I'm getting an error here. Do you know why I'm getting an error here on the Y? It was already declared. Once you declare a variable, you can only use it once. We need a new variable name here. I'll call this Z. Let's make this... You know, I've never done this before. We're going to try something really interesting here. This might or might not work. I'm not sure. I'm taking a chance here. I'll say I have 1.2345678901234512345. There's my 15 places of accuracy. I'll say E to the power of 302. That is a big whopping number. That is the same thing as 1.23 so on times 10 to the power of 302. You'd be a long time at writing just the decimals. Let's see now if... I can take my double, or my single, or my double, it is a double, my single. And you know what? I can't do to the power of 302 with a single. That's for a double. I better change this to the power of 38 is as big as I get. Let me try a 37 here. It should handle to the power of 37. And you don't get 15 places of accuracy here with a double. No, you're only going to get about 5 or 6. This should work. Let's declare my single as a single. And then down here, I'll say my single is equal to C, S, N, G, L of Z. And then I'll change this right here to my single here. And like I said, I'm not even sure if this will work. Let's just see if it does. Uh-oh, it doesn't like that. If I misspelled it, it is, I have two E's, S-N-G, sorry. Thank you. That looks good, and it looks like my notes need to be corrected there, so let's correct that. I say it in the notes, but then I write it wrong. Let me resave this version. I'll call this version 21. And let's go back to here and let's just run it and see what happens. Did it work? Uh-oh, yours didn't. 
Mine did. I've got that number. It makes sense. That's exactly what I wrote here. Oh, it changed the number that was in there a little bit. Z as string. I read what's in Z. I put it into my single. I take two times that. And sure enough, two times that is this. It did work. Do you see that? Isn't that cool? So right now what you guys are doing is you are making some pretty interesting um, conversions of strings to numbers. Well, there's one way else that we can go. Instead of going numbers to strings, or strings to numbers, you can also go numbers or strings numbers to strings the other way. Well, let's see that in action. Where that comes in handy is technically anytime you add something to a label or a text box, these things are going to be strings. They shouldn't be numbers. We shouldn't be able to add numbers to text boxes, labels, things like that. That's a little sloppy that we can do that. If you took Java, you wouldn't be able to do it. C++ operates the same way. Visual Basic should be the same way. If you made this option explicit, you probably couldn't do it. So to make that work, we're going to use the command CSTR, convert to a string. So in this one, I'm going to say dim A as string. We'll set this equal to, or excuse me, A as whatever. It could be any numerical type that you want. I'll say integer, and I'll say it's equal to 110. Now what I want to do is I want to dim my string as string and I want to say now my string is equal to whatever A is. I'm going to do something to A. I want to convert it to a string. Obviously what would that command be? CSTR. Put parentheses around the A. That becomes the container we put A in. Specifically, A becomes an argument. Anything in the parentheses is called an argument. Now, let's prove it's a string. So I should be able to add it to the list box, listbox1.items.add, and I'll just add A. Now, that's not very convincing, because we've been able to add even numbers to list boxes and stuff. So let's do some concatenation. What's that? Yes, I do. I want my string. Thank you. Let's concatenate something onto the end of it that makes it a little more plausible that it really is a string. So in concatenation, I can say my string is equal to, say, some words in quotes. I could say this is what my string was, unquote. And to that, I'll concatenate the A, or my string. And what you've just done is you've taken that number, you've concatenated it onto that string, and you're never allowed to concatenate numbers onto strings. And what I'm about to do is I'm about to add it to my list box. If this works, this is proof that that works. Let me go ahead and run this. And there you go. Oops. It looks like I didn't make my list box big enough. Let's increase the size of the list box so you can see the punch line. So let's just make that really, really big so we've got everything. And we'll rebuild it and run it. And there we go. You can see that we successfully concatenated. So now we're able to go from numbers to strings and strings to numbers. And I can tell you there is no language I'm aware of that does this as easily as BASIC or Visual BASIC does. This is as easy as it gets. It's always harder than this. At this point, this concludes this tutorial.